All right, so I've got another NPC upgrade build for you guys today, and we're looking at V1 Freud's Locksmith AC. Now, this build is interesting for a couple of reasons. First, despite being, you know, an archivist member, part of the Vespers, Freud uses not only you know, kinetic and explosive weapons, but he also uses Balaam AC frame parts. So, you know, just from that perspective, it's way more varied than most of the archivist AC builds, and kind of gives me a bit more room to work with in terms of like how I want to modify the build a bit but and also this is I think where we got to get into the build's problem it's a very generalist build kind of seems like it was meant to be able to handle anything but I actually think this is probably the greatest weakness of this build is that it's too generalist right when it said it could focus on just being good at certain situations and forcing those situations right which is easy enough to do and that's the situation I'm talking about specifically it's just simply being really close range, right? Because, you know, the rest of the weapons kind of already lean towards being really close range weapons, right? The laser drone, I mean, yes, is any range, right? But it's best used at close range, so you can sort of apply extra pressure to your opponent. The morally, the spread bazooka obviously is a close range weapon. It's a, it's a it's an explosive shotgun, right? And then, of course, the laser blade, a melee weapon. And then the Turner assault rifle, which is is a close range weapon it doesn't have great projectile speed it doesn't do good damage and honestly this weapon uh, the turner is quite bad probably the single worst part of this build is the turner also some of the frame and internal parts aren't the best choices either i almost feel like when i was looking at this build i almost got the impression that they were maybe even afraid to make this build as good as it could be despite freud being you know a really late game enemy it, it, I really did get the impression that that were they were holding back with this AC, right? Is my impression, and that's kind of be the main focus of this build. Like, how would I take Freud, his current theme, his current setup, and elevate it to the next level of being like a really strong, high skill cap build, right? And well, what you see in the background is what I came up with. Let's go ahead and get on into the assembly. I'll go over the changes I made and kind of detail why I made them. Go into more depth and explanations, right? Let's get into it. All right, now first, the weapons. Now, I've made two changes here, but let's talk about what I didn't change first and sort of get that out of the way. The two back units, the Morley and the Laser Drone. I didn't change these mostly just because they're really, really good. And there just wasn't a good reason to change them. The Morley, the Spread Bazooka, is a really devastating close range weapon especially if you've got any height like a uh, verticality over your opponent and if they're you know anywhere near the ground this weapon is really 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 dangerous it does a ton of damage it does a ton of impact and it has really good direct hit adjustment too right this is just a fantastic weapon all around probably two main downsides of the weapon it doesn't have the best ammo capacity and it has pretty low fire time right when you actually you know, press the button to fire it it takes a good second for it to come out it's slow but it's really devastating when it does land now the laser drone on the other hand is particularly useful in two regards first as a distraction and uh you know deterrent i guess would be the best way to put it right when you deploy these laser drones if your opponent does anything to try to punish you let's say you pull, deploy the laser drones and you fire them morally the morally locks you in place for a second if your opponent tries to punish you during that and you've preemptively set up your laser drones, it's very likely they'll get blasted by the laser drones in exchange. And if you've done the charge shot version of the laser drone, they're going to eat, be eating a good chunk of damage. This weapon really serves as a great deterrent to, at the very least, punish your opponent for punishing you, right? That and just being an absolute nuisance to deal with. And the other way this can be used is with a really you know, well-timed deployment and stagger you can get an absolutely disgusting amount of direct hit damage off in a single stagger with these things right and i just mean disgusting you can really easily like one like you know like wombo like like one combo kill someone or another ac with this with these things really 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 good weapons definitely can't underestimate them now moving on to what i did change first off the right arm unit i put i've switched out the original turner assault rifle for the haldeman and I have a couple thoughts here, but first I do want to say I did consider using the Ransetsu RF instead. This is the best, you know, assault rifle, so to speak. I know it's a burst rifle technically, but in terms of like as the assault rifle style weapon scope, this is probably the best in the game at the moment. And I did really strongly consider giving uh, this, you know, using this on this build. 
but I did end up lingering towards the Haldeman for two main reasons. First of all, the Haldeman is very, very strong. I know like pre like Zimmerman nerf, I feel like a lot of people, including myself, thought this weapon was quite bad and was confused when it got nerfed in that same patch. But time has uh, proven me and I think a lot of people very wrong on the Haldeman. This weapon is incredibly strong, even after a small nerf that it got. Really, really strong weapon. It's great, especially for combos and like direct hit damage combos, right? Really, really strong, especially compared with paired with something like the laser dagger, which does a ton of damage in a direct hit combo because you get the full like a uh, light attack combo, like all three hits. You get the full three hits on a stagger. It's really strong. It does a ton of damage. And this thing basically recharges in like a second, right? It may even be less than a second. This thing is basically always up and ready to go. And it also functions, you know, amazingly as a mobility tool for melee boosting, right? And this build is a very high skill cap build. And melee boosting is one thing that's under consideration for this build and something you're kind of meant to use to play with it. If you don't know how it works, it's pretty simple. You do a melee attack with, you know, while you're locked onto an opponent, you will rush at the opponent and then you simply do a quick boost or assault boost to cancel the attack before it actually comes out, right? It doesn't go on cooldown. And you could do it again, right? And that's how melee boosting works. And there is something that I uh, this build is intended to use, despite it already being a fairly high mobility build, 331 boost speed. Uh, the quick boost reload time isn't the worst. It's got pretty good assault boost speed as well. But this build is also intended to be using uh, melee boosting, right? Keep that in mind. Laser dagger and like I said, these two weapons together are really, really strong. Under the right circumstances, you can very easily get a full Haldeman shot into a full laser dagger combo in a single direct hit, you know, uh, you know, single stagger, do a ton of damage. Whew. There's a lot to go over for the weapons, but I think I've covered everything. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and move on. Let's get into the frame parts. Now starting with the head, we've got the Melander C3, which from the original Melander head. Now, honestly, this is, it doesn't really matter which one of these you use, right? It's not that big of a deal either way. And the main reason I switched this out is just because it looks a little better with the out with uh, these arms, right? I don't almost called them the Alba arms, but it looks a little better paired with those arms, in my opinion. It's also got slightly better defenses to sort of help make up for the defenses I lose uh, when I switched out the arms on this build. Get into that in just a second. And that's the main reason why I didn't feel like it was necessary to trade this out for anything particularly bigger. And I decided to just sort of keep the look and just, you know, get the slightly better defensive why you know, defensively hit it does have slightly worse system recovery which is you know worth considering but it's not that big of a deal right now the core i didn't change no particular reason to this is a pretty decent core it's got decent stats across the board nothing particularly amazing nothing particularly bad i guess you could say the attitude stability is a bit on the low side but it is a very lightweight core or at least fairly lightweight core you know kind of mid-weight-ish and it's got good like booster and generator stats, right? Good core all around. And for arms, I switched out his original VP46S for the 46D. Uh, the main reason here is just simply going for to be for the better firearm and melee specialization stats. And of course, at the trade-off of having worse defenses. But also the VP46D arms are just some of the best arms in the game. Um, I think a lot of people might consider this to be the best arms in the game. They're really, really good. They've just got really good all-around offensive stats, right? Uh, it's kind of hard to beat these arms in a lot of builds. Incredibly, incredibly, incredibly good. And then finally for the legs, I didn't change these to Melander legs. Like it, there was just no reason to. Uh, the build worked just fine as is. These are, you know, they're not great. They're not the worst. For their weight, they don't have terrible, terrible defenses, right? I considered switching them out, but I decided that I already traded off enough drivability of the arms. There wasn't a particularly good reason to switch out for like these. And, you know... Obviously, uh, the, you know, it would be over the load limit anyways, right? Uh, so yeah, it just wasn't a good reason to change it. That's all there is to say about the frame parts. There wasn't really you know, much that needed adjustment here. The main thing was really just the arms, right? I could have left the head alone, but I just think that the, the C3 just looks way better with these arms than the regular Melander head does, right? That's enough about the frame parts. Let's move on into the internals. All right, now getting into the internals, starting the boosters here. First, the NGI-001. Now, I didn't mention before that I wanted to keep this build being a pretty generalist, good at everything sort of build. 
and I deliberated a while on what boosters I wanted to use here to sort of support that as best as possible and I ended up settling on these. You know, they just got good everything, right? Everything's decent at least. Good thrust. The upper thrust consumption sure isn't the best, but you know, it is what it is. But you know, good quick boost, decent assault boost, and decent melee attack thrust. And this is important for this build. Again, melee boosting with the laser dagger. Now, obviously it's not exactly amazing. There are plenty of boosters with more. And the Kakaku being, of course, the premier melee booster, uh, melee boosting booster, right? Uh, now, you're, and obviously you're not going to get as much range out of melee boost with the laser dagger with it as you would the Kakaku boosters. But you still get about 100 or so meters of a dash out of it. So it's still pretty good. You just have to be aware that you're just not going to get as much as you would out of Kakaku boosters. But in exchange, you know, you have good everything. Your boost speed is good. Your quick boosts are good. Your assault boost speed is good. And your, even your assault boost consumption isn't the worst. It's obviously nowhere near as good as Takaku's assault boost consumption, but it's still decent, right? I mean, it's, a, it's on the bad side, but it's good enough, right? And yeah, just good at everything what I settled for. Might have noticed earlier in the video I had this uh, the Tauba on instead. I was experimenting with using the Rensetsu RF. I forgot to switch the FCS back afterwards, but I had decided to leave him with his original FCS, the Abbott, right? Post range assist is the only thing this build particularly needs. Obviously, I could switch out to the Ocelist to get more, but there's just no reason to. It's not that big of an improvement regardless. And again, there's no reason to switch off what he had originally. I decided, I decided to leave it alone. Now for a generator, the Hokushi generator. I don't remember what he has on originally right now, but main reason we're switching to this one is it's got good energy output, energy capacity, and energy recharge or its weight stat, right? And this is part of the reason we're still so fast, because, you know, they want to use Santa or something, it lowers our speed down a lot, right? Now, it does have a fairly long recharge delay of one second, but as long as you don't actually run out of energy, you go back to full energy, you know, like an, in an instant. You just got to scrape your feet on the ground and you're back to full up. And again, really good energy output for the weight. And that's what, you know, that's what gets our energy supply efficiency so high, right? And again, it has decent energy capacity for its weight and energy output. And that's the, that's the whole reason, right? And one thing to note, if you're worried about the energy firearm spec not being great, none of the weapons in this build benefit from uh, energy firearm specialization. Neither the laser drone or the laser dagger benefit from it in any way, just so you know. And, uh, yeah, uh, for expansion, he has Pulse Armor on originally. I didn't switch it. Obviously, you can use whatever you want here. It is what it is. But that's it for the build. As always, if you want to see some more gameplay footage, stick around here in a minute. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll catch you in the next one. Chief, enemy detected. Coming in hot. ID code reads V1. V1. Freud's making his move. Hurry it up, tourist. Kept me waiting, tourist. Did what I could. Now we can fight back.
Walter, Chatty, we were all counting on you.